Hi, uh, I just thought I would uh, make a small uh, scenario video. And uh, this is regarding uh, EMP and EMP scenarios. Now, when we're talking about electromagnetic pulse or EMP, there are two likely sources. The first one is, of course, from a nuclear detonation from a foreign nation detonated in the high atmosphere. Um, Although it would be devastating, this EMP would be uh, very localized. And although some people do believe that uh, it could be uh, brought about from a terrorist attack, I do see that it is highly unlikely. However, it is uh, not some something that we can ever rule out. Um, what I'm going to focus on is uh, an EMP from our sun, because that is much more likely at the time being at the... Uh, with the solar maximum coming in 2013 and uh, the fact that a glo global EMP uh, would come from the sun. So uh, let's take a look at the sun. We see it here in the picture. The white spots are also known as sunspots and they can produce solar flares which are classed in M flares and X flares. Uh, X flares being the mo most potent flares. Um, and yeah, let's just go on. When um, when a solar eruption happens or a solar storm, that's actually something called a CME or a coronal mass ejection from these uh, sunspots. They actually blow out a huge amount of charged particles that, uh, if aimed at the sun or at the Earth, will uh, hit our uh, magnetic field and um, be absorbed by the magnetic field. And that normally shows us uh, aurora borealis. Um, let's just go on here. Um, now here we have an illustration of the, um, the Earth and the Sun, of course, and the magnetic fields and how uh, solar eruptions can actually influence the magnetic field. Uh, as you know, uh, the magnetic field on our planet is acting as a shield that shields us from uh, harmful particles and radiation from space and uh, normally this uh, shield would be more than enough to deflect uh, solar eruptions uh, both M-class and X-class. The problem is however that if we are at a solar maximum we'll, we will be seeing a lot of sunspots and hence a lot of powerful flares. Now if we are very unlucky uh, we will have an eruption from a sunspot that is actually pointing towards uh, our planet. Um, normally, even though it would be a violent eruption, uh, our magnetic field would deflect uh, the particles and keep our electronics safe. But the uh, problem occurs when we have two or more powerful x flares in a row. The first one will uh, just uh, put our uh, magnetic field to the test and really uh, stress it and when the second or third one hits we will have our shields down and that would induce some voltage surges in the ground that could and will uh, cause uh, earthquakes but first and foremost it would enter our uh, power lines our uh, small electronics such as cell phones computers what, what have you not and would knock out transformers worldwide which will cause a global blackout and those transformers are very hard to replace um, here we have some uh, northern lights also called aura borealis that's actually uh, charged particles from the sun entering our atmosphere and uh, colliding with other particles uh, in a massive uh, solar flare we would see uh, northern lights as far south as to the equator. It would be very awesome looking but <laughs> eerie as well. It will actually be a beautiful end of the world. Uh, of course you would see uh, a massive blackout. It will happen without any warning. Just be lights out and you would have no phone, uh, no power because the power grid would be uh, toast. Uh, Actually, it is predicted that uh, this power surge, which are going to enter the power lines, are going to be so massive that uh, some power lines would just burn right off. Uh, the transformers would melt and they would be hard to replace. It's almost impossible because we would have no production line because that needs electricity and there would be no way of making electricity. So, trying to organize a rebuild of the power lines in the midst of a chaos without any ways of communicating would just be, uh, be very unlikely. 
Uh, also, communications would be knocked out effectively. Worldwide communications, would, which is going through satellites, will be gone because all of the satellites would be fried. Maybe one or two military satellites would be up and running, but those satellites would be military class only. Even the uh, um, the International Space Station, the, the astronauts there would be gone because of the radiation. So most of the satellites would be gone. And that, of course, uh, means also <laughs> communication via cell phone. Uh, no ways of communicating with with anyone. Your computer would be gone and it will not be coming back. It would be fried. So uh, make sure that you have some sort of stash of if your personal information and uh, family photos somewhere else because this baby here is toast. Uh, what? The cars. Let's just go back. The cars would be gone. Uh, most modern cars uh, rely on electronics, and those electronics would be fried, so there would be no way of moving about unless you have an old diesel vehicle or an EMP secured vehicle. Uh, some preppers might uh, ground the vehicle and take out the batteries and so on to protect the vehicles from an EMP. So older vehicles would be running, but guys like this one, he will be parked forever. Um, if a blackout happens, whether it's an EMP or what else, uh, you need to store water. That's the first priority. Fill up everything in your house with water because chances are that the power plant will be knocked out as well and they need pumps to keep pressure on the lines. So within a few minutes, perhaps 10 minutes, there will be no more water because the pressure in the lines would be gone. So make sure that you are the one who removes that pressure by storing as much water as you can before your neighbor. So uh, here we are in a world with no power, no way of communicating. It's dark, we have no water. We will not be able to flush our toilet because there's no water. So sanitation will become a problem within just a few days. If you're in a temperate climate and you rely on central heating or electrical heating, you will be in big trouble. You would need a fire stove in order to keep warm because this baby here will be gone. So let's go to the woods and cut some firewood. Uh -uh. The electrical plugs in your chainsaw will also be fried. You cannot start it. So make sure that you have some sort of EMP protection for your chainsaw. And of course, supplies will stop because most trucks are uh, in need of electronics and they will be fried. Furthermore, there will be no way for the truckers to communicate and uh, sooner or later they will run out of fuel because there will be no ways of pumping fuel from the oil rigs, transporting it to land and so on. That supply line will be dead. Uh, shipping will be gone. You will have no uh, radar, no navigation systems. The ships will just be literally dead in the sea. So no way of uh, intercontinental transport either. Uh, local uh, agriculture would be knocked out because most agricultural grounds actually rely on irrigation and irrigation relies on water pumps and water pumps rely on electricity so within a few months a year there will be a very significant food shortage that would cost them a great deal of lives stores that's what they look like daily but uh, actually most food stores only have supplies to last them for three days and in case of an emergency they will be just emptied within hours. But you will need some sort of cash. That's the only need you will have ever for cash because currency will die out within a few weeks. But in the first few days, cash will be good to have because you cannot pay with your credit card. Um, but within a week or so, this is what your local store would look like. Looting anarchy. Because there is no police. So see here, the police, they rely on radios, they rely on communications with the officials and the government. There will be no such thing. They will be uh, having a really hard time trying to organize things. So most likely you will see rioting, looting and anarchy. Police and government, if still efficient, will try to preserve the high priority things, um, such as their own asses, so to speak. If you get sick, you have a big problem. The doctors will be out of order, so to speak. They will have no uh, machines. They will have no way of testing your blood. Uh, basically, they will be back 200 years, the medicine. Uh, if you rely on medicine, 
pills if you have diabetes and so on, you will also be in a very bad place because there will be no production of medicine, no shipment of medicine. Hospitals will run out within a week or so. So if you rely on medicine to stay alive, you are most likely toast. For instance, if you're diabetic, uh, even though you stored as much insulin as possibly, you could only store it for six months and you would need it refrigerated. That's another deal. So it will be impossible to stay alive, basically. Um, so you'll see a massive, massive die off just within a few months after the EMP. Uh, simply a die off of people who rely on modern technology to stay alive. And that's quite a lot, actually. So the hospitals will be basically just uh, comforting zones. They will be able to do very little, perhaps some surgery, but not much else. They will not be able to put you in anesthetics. Uh, it will be a bad place to be if you get sick. So what, have you, what haven't we heard about this? Well, we have. This is Michio Kaku, who you might know from Discovery Channel. He is actually a quite brilliant uh, physicist and uh, spokesman for the American Physicist Association. And they are aware of this threat from our sun and have repeatedly tried to convince the government to put some sort of precautions into place to protect vital installations at the power plants. But so far, the government are not listening. Even NASA are trying to convince the government. Um, but it seems to be an uphill battle because there ain't many vote, that many votes in EMP protection. So uh, they are finding a hard place getting funding. Uh, another problem in suburban and urban areas, you would see fires begin and they would not be able to be put out because there are no fire department. You cannot call the fire department. And if they actually do show up, they will have no water pressure. Uh, so you would see massive fires just burn through areas. Uh, this guy right here, he has his own protection. Uh, so I wonder if you have any protection because this guy here, he has a whole bunker on the Denver airport, which is top, top secret, but everybody knows about it. That's his personally, personal doomsday bunker. So I, I would take my own precautions. Don't rely on the government to come and save your ass because they won't. You'll be on your own. So that's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, watch out for power plants. If you ne live near a power plant, get the hell out of there. Once the, the power supplies uh, dwindle, they will have no way of cooling the, their um, reactors and we will see meltdowns, Fukushima-like. So get the hell out of Dodge if you live near a nuclear power plant. If for more information on EMP protection, uh, EMP scenarios and the likelihood of uh, EMP, or other prepping and survival skills, uh, please visit our website and don't forget to sub subscribe. Thank you.